Good morning, my peeps. Today is the 4th of July. I'm with my typical can't stop, won't stop attitude. Um, I got chores to do, aka work to do. Um, what's even better than doing work that you actually get paid for? Work you don't get paid for. Um, so today we're going to be doing a video for, if you can see here, my Yardistry Pavilion. Uh, a few of you guys have asked me about the pavilion before. Um, I reached out to Adam, or actually Adam from Yardistry reached out to me from one of my videos uh, that I showed the snow covering. Um, and we talked a little bit, I, I made a suggestion about them, you know, coming up with a gutter system um, because I really do feel like, and, and maybe this is more of because where I have it placed, but um, where I have it placed, the water just sheets off of this thing like crazy, comes right down. You can see I have my grill here, so obviously the grill gets wet. More importantly, I just feel like my patio is just always wet. The rainwater hits that, uh, hits the concrete just funnels in and the underside of the patio is just always, always wet. Uh, more importantly, you're gonna see over here now, now I have ponds over here. I didn't have these when I first uh, got the pavilion. And you're gonna see water's gonna shoot off the side, come right down right where we sit. Um, so it's not gonna be a, a nice area to sit when it's raining out. And then the water will sheet down and either go into the ground or go off into the pond. <clears throat> Not a huge, huge deal, uh, but again, we want to be able to enjoy this area more. So Adam, a few months ago, actually, sent me these uh, this gutter system. They were actually planning a gutter system as I was asking about this, um, and he promised to send me one of the prototype sets uh, pre-production. That was last summer, so with COVID and all the other stuff going on, these things must have got stuck on a ship or something, and he had no access to them for, you know, the better part of a year. Um, he just sent these to me a few months ago. I said once I got uh, finished up with a couple of the projects, I was going to get these installed. Super, super excited. This was the project that I wanted to finish up to get these installed. Um, I still have so many other things to do. Um, this is done-ish. And I finally just cleaned the patio yesterday. Patio has just been a train wreck. There's been clay all over the place. There's been all kinds of stuff everywhere from the excavation of this and getting this squared away. So this is pretty much done. I now want to get the uh, gutters installed on this thing. Uh, so let me go ahead and flip over to the headset and I'll show you guys what's in this. All right. Now, let's see what we got. Some kind of channeling system. Uh, got some bracketry. So it looks like it's got some plastic bracketry. We got some hardware. Don't know what that one is yet. Uh, we got some clamps. We got a spot for a downspout, it looks like. Some instructions. And we got the actual gutter system itself. Uh, feels like this is a plastic gutter system. All right, man, there's a lot more pieces of this than I thought there was gonna be. So it looks like these are spots for downspouts. All right, let me take a look at the instructions and uh, we'll make sense of it all. All right, so we got the gist of the parts laid out here. The only thing I don't have pictured here is the hardware, and I actually have screens to go over the gutters. Uh, actually, I think it's screens that go over the downspouts. Uh, so we got some gutter, rain gutter end caps. Uh, end cap drains, I'm sorry. We got the end caps. We got the center connectors. We got the downspout straps, downspout angles, and the gutter brackets. And we have the gutters themselves and then downspouts and downspout extensions. Um, everything appears to be a real nice injection mold in plastic. Uh, the color of the plastic matches the color of the roof. That's nice. Um, <clears throat> I haven't looked through the instructions yet, but everything appears to be there. Again, we got some hardware over here. That's actually sealant. 
has hardware. They had these nice uh, uh, separating shim things here. These are actually really cool. I'm gonna repurpose those for the greater good of my garage. I'm sure I will find plenty of things to do with those. Um, and it looks like these are the strainers or the um, leaf stops. That's what they're calling them, leaf stops. So it'll actually go uh, down the center of the downspouts, I guess. And uh, throw those in the pile and we'll get cracking. First step is going to be to put a bracket at each one of the rafter straps. Uh, they're going to go, uh, I think it's a three-eighths of an inch uh, below the strap. Um, and you're going to want to angle them down a little bit um, for the gutters to attach to. So you're going to do seven on each side, I think it was. And hopefully no bees come to that little bee's nest right there. Uh, but I will go ahead and get those brackets up. All right, so one thing I'm going to suggest before you get started is fully read the instructions. Don't go page by page. Um, I think if you fully read the instructions, you will. Uh, this will make a lot more sense. I made that mistake the first time trying to go for common sense and kind of messed myself up a little bit. So essentially, you want to place the brackets on the inside of the rafters or the I'm sorry, the outside of the rafters. Um, it's going to say slope them downward and you go anywhere from P1 to P2. Uh, P2, give a gap of 3 8 yada, yada, yada. Again, kind of leaving it open for interpretation. You can either butt the bracket straight up, which is what I did on the first one, or you can give yourself a 3 8 of an inch gap. Uh, I'm not sure why you would want to do that yet, but uh, maybe it makes it easier with sliding the um, channels through. Essentially, you're going to do that. Just do the top screw uh, and leave the brackets hang. You'll see why later. This is where I didn't read through all the way. Um, essentially, you're going to go through and slide through the gutters. Uh, that's where you kind of want to let these hang a little bit. You're going to want to start from the inside out. Um, and that's going to tell you about thinking about the caps. So you'll start these all the way through, get the end caps on, and then get them in place. And then you'll go ahead and do that center cap later after you get everything in place. Now here's where it tells you to slide from opposite ends. Again, this is why you read ahead. Slide from opposite ends uh, because there is a little bit of a shimmy job you have to do to get these end brackets on uh, because there is an end cap there on the end of the pavilion. Uh, so think this through a little bit. Um, make sure when you're sliding the uh, channel through the, or the trough through the channels that you're going on the inside angle or the inside part of the channel. I'll show you that later where I messed up, um, where I just kind of slid through and then I looked at it. I was like, oh, I missed the uh, inside part of the channel. After you get everything in place, you're going to push the uh, trough up, do your second screw, everything's going to end up level, and then you do your downspouts. Um, after you do the downspouts and strap those up, then you're going to seal. They give you some sealant. You're going to seal the end caps and seal the center cap so there's no leakage. And when you're done, the end result is going to look like this. You see the downspout, you'll see your rain gutters. Uh, I may have to do a little bit more positioning on the rain gutters, but uh, essentially that is what it will look like. So we'll go ahead and do the other side and uh, go from there. All right, you're going to see all the gutter brackets hooked up on all the rafters. Uh, next step is to snap in the gutter. I think I know why they suggested to do three-eighths of an inch down, um, but they didn't really say why, and they didn't say to start it with one uh, screw. So I took out one of the screws on the brackets. You have to slide this uh, gutter through these brackets. You can't snap them in once they're in place. Uh, the channels are just way too tight of a tolerance. And then you're going to need this to swing uh, to get all the to get the gutter all the way through and to get the uh, other gutter snapped into this. So let's go ahead and get that through. You see that comes out the other side. So you have 
two gutters that are going to have to snap together. I'm going to apologize for the sun because that is glaring right in my eyes as I'm cresting above this to put it on. So again, you're going to have to have this uh, slide in. You'll see one actually slid out. Actually, I didn't even have those backside. So it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to do by yourself. Uh, let me go ahead and slide those back through and I'll show you the rest of the setup. All right. As I was saying, you got to be very vigilant with getting that uh, gutter to slide into the channels. It may feel like it's going in the channels, but again, very, very tight tolerances. So uh, make sure it's going into that top channel as you're sliding across or you will end up with like what I just did. So let me go ahead and get the um, I'm going to get the coupler right there and we'll get another channel and then we'll do the end pieces. All right, so this one I had to actually start on the second bracket, push it through, get it started, and then slide it back through to get it on this side uh, because the end caps are kind of uh, getting in the way. Um, you see the center bracket here, the center bracket, hopefully you guys can see it. Oh my GoPro's not getting messed up. Center bracket actually slides in and snaps into those snaps. And I will try. I'm going to try to show how to get this in. All right, that's going to slide in there. And then that's going to go on the outside channel. And then that snaps in. And then hopefully doesn't look like that is sitting in there great so I don't think that yeah that might work I was gonna say I don't think that this center piece is meant to sit within this bracket it's probably meant to slide off a little bit more and uh, for the bracket to sit into this channel all right, you're going to have an end cap for one side and a downspout cap for the other side, uh, depending on which way you're going to orient things. Uh, I want my downspouts going out this way, so I'm going to put the cap there and the downspout this way. Again, they're going to snap into place like the other one did. I'll try and get that on camera. So due to tight tolerances and these end caps kind of get in the way a little bit, um, you gonna kind of have to slide this back a little bit, get the end cap started. You can see it's going to sit in the channels. And it'll just snap in kind of butt that up against and then you're gonna have to start from the other side and do the same thing on the other side to start the downspout and then you'll join those back together so just a little bit of shimmying around to get all this stuff to fit um it's a little bit of a little bit of a puzzle again logically it makes sense um it's just you got to do some shifting and moving around so we got the end cap on we got the end cap on now to try and figure out how to get this to slide back into the bracket so i may need to take that bracket off um, because here's where we get into a little bit of an issue with fitment let's see here so if we do it that way that's gonna work okay but you gotta be able to let's see here all right all right see they thought this through it's just not me thinking it through all right i gotta get that snapped out all right so if you mess this up like i did you have to take a bracket off slide it on the end and kind of shimmy its way back through into place once you do then everything should line up snap in and then you can go ahead and adjust the angle of your rain gutter system. Um, so you'll see you should have a decently tight gap there. You're probably going to have to seal that up with sealant. That's probably what the sealant's for. But again, you can see this thing is kind of in place. I've just got to tighten everything up and adjust it. Um, the gutters aren't big. Uh, the downspout's not big. I'm hoping it is going to be uh, useful at that size. Um, but let's get it all together. Let's see. This is a very well thought out design. Um, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I'm going to question its ability to channel water. It's not going to channel a lot of water. Um, it's going to do the trick for most uh, rainstorms. I, I don't know that this is going to be enough for some bigger rainstorms, but we'll see. Again, well thought out. Um, give you all the perfect angles 
for everything to line up perfectly with this uh, pavilion. Um, the straps right here, straps again, perfectly molded for this design. One goes in there, one goes in the side, um, and everything should just tuck in just perfectly. So uh, we'll go ahead and get this buttoned up and then we could probably get some kind of flexi spout or something uh, for the bottom uh, to be able to run it right out the side. That's what the intent is. I want to get it off to the end of the patio. Um, I don't know that they thought that one out. Then I don't see any pieces for. Um, so I'll give Adam some feedback on that. Um, but otherwise, uh, if you follow the directions, uh, you go a little bit ahead on the directions, uh, it'll make a lot more sense. Let's go ahead and get this buttoned up. All right, so say to the camera what you just said to me 30 seconds ago. I said that it must be going well because I haven't heard any swearing or yelling out here today. <laughs> All right, so Adam, if that says anything, and I literally just said why there was no yelling and swearing because it was a pretty well engineered system. I didn't have to swear and yell. Um, did I have to redo a little bit because I probably didn't read forward enough in the directions? Yes, but it wasn't an issue. Um, the pieces come apart easy enough once you understand how to slide things in and out. So thumbs up to Adam and his engineering crew for doing a good job and making this peat friendly and a uh, non rage experience because this is first thing in the morning. Uh, it is very hot already and i just get annoyed in general very easily so um this has been a very uh very easy setup so you can see the second one's up i just gotta kind of push the uh, channel up a little bit and get a second screws in and then uh, we'll get the down spout in so uh honestly it's taking me longer to record this than to put this up and of course the second one goes easier than the first one but you know that's how stuff goes i made this side a little bit nicer i'll tuck this up a little bit more and i'll push it up Kind of get rid of that gap there and uh, uh, dry those screws in. So the last thing other than doing the sealant um, is doing these gutter stops uh, or the gutter leaf stops. So um, you'll see that uh, Adam and crew thought this out. I'm trying to do this one handed, one suck. All right, it makes a lot more sense to go on POV mode. So you can see that uh, Adam and his engineering team thought this out with uh, getting leaves uh, stuck inside the gutters. Um, again, just a really simple thought out injection molded plastic piece that's just going to drop in the top of the uh, gutter downspout to keep leaves from uh, building up and collecting. I gotta actually look, I don't know if it's gonna go like that or go like that, because if it goes like that, obviously the leaves are gonna get in. So I gotta look and see if there were directions included with this, but essentially this is to um, not get the gutter downspouts clogged. So I don't know if this was an aftermath because this did come separate. And boom, look at that, I was kinda right. It's gonna go straight up. And again, that's gonna keep leaves from uh, clogging up your downspouts. These are already small, so, um, um you know it's anything to keep them from getting clogged will help so if drain holes covered by bracket use the following instructions so how much you want to make a bet my drain spout is covered by the bracket bend the bracket a little bit to the left add good or leaf spouts okay let's see how easily this will go in so after a bit of shimmying and figuring out the algorithm to get this in i think i got this to where i can show this on camera so let's see if we can get good enough base here so this one might actually go in a little bit easier so the key is to start this way and not trying to finagle it in this way and it is a very tight fit again everything is very tight tolerances so you'll start this way and you'll push down on the gutter and push out to the side <clears throat> as soon as I get this on camera it's gonna fight with me so there we go so just gotta get it lined up good first and 
Again, very, very tight tolerances. And boom, that is in there. So, Adam, curse and a blessing. Um, you'll see the tolerances are very, very tight. I don't know if you can see, it's actually cupping out uh, on the inside of the leaf catch. Um, not a huge deal, but that is how tight it is. So I'd probably suggest maybe taking a smidge more material off to get that to slide in there. But it's a catch twenty-two. you take off some material, these things fall out, you don't take off material, and people are gonna have to fight with it a little bit to get it in. Um, yeah. While I'm up here, I figure it's a good time to check out the roof. Uh, everything's holding up pretty good with the roof. I don't have any complaints. I haven't got any leaks underneath. Um, you'll see this part has not been treated at all. I didn't treat the tops. Um, that's still holding up pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and get down. And I'll show you guys overall. Um, this thing's been up, I don't know, four years maybe-ish. Um, you can tell the parts that are treated versus non-treated. Down there, that part was non-treated. It's starting to break down a little bit, but not terrible. I do want to get those treated. Um, all the outside facing pieces have been treated. They're holding up great. This was not treated. Uh, it's still holding up pretty good. You know, again, three, four years of winter, summer, you know, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. Um, and yeah, everything is holding up great. Um, I thought I was gonna have some problems with some of the splits. Uh, here which the artistry uh, did send me new pieces that I haven't installed yet because I want to see you know how long they were gonna hold up with the splits um, everything has held up great again I, I sealed it a couple years ago and I haven't touched it since I haven't even cleaned it um, everything is holding up great um, Adam did suggest that I put the anchors down um, he has said he has seen uh, some gazebos take off you know they rate these up to like 70 mile an hour winds or something um, we've got some pretty rowdy winds here and I want to say my saving grace is why this has not took off again This is a heavy this is like a thousand pound structure. It's it's not light. So you got to get some pretty unreal um, Pretty unreal winds to get this thing to go anywhere uh, My saving grace is this is a pavilion and not a gazebo So air can go in and out this way. So instead of trapping when the air is coming instead of trapping and lifting the air can trap and kind of disperse out the sides. Um, that's not the main reason why I got this. The main reason was because if I would have got a gazebo, water would have funneled off this way. It would have came too close to house. People would have hit their heads. You know, I probably would have got sued and, you know, stuff like that. But apologize for the truck in the background. For some reason, trucks decide the need to use their air brakes. Uh, but yeah, so I think that is my saving grace because this is a pavilion and not a gazebo. But otherwise, you know, structurally, this thing is held up phenomenally, absolutely phenomenally. Um, for the price that I paid for this thing, man, I am extremely, extremely happy because I would have paid an Amish person to build something like this. God, I mean, maybe they might have used a little bit better wood, but... Um, I would have paid an Amish person at least six grand, maybe eight grand to build something like this. I want to say with the sale at Costco when I got it, I was like 1200 in. Um, so, oh my God, I just, I, we absolutely love this thing. It has just added a great, great uh, look to the patio, made it feel a little bit less cold. Um, you know, with the concrete, obviously adding the ponds and the uh, landscaping has helped out tremendously. But um, again, Adam and crew at Yardistry, you guys did a great job. Um, I still am curious on the efficacy of how much water this is going to be able to channel. So my main test for this is next time it rains. I think it's supposed to rain this week and I'm actually going to, I'm going to hold off and post the video because I want to see. I'm really curious uh how much water this is going to be able to channel i'm not uh, i don't have super super high expectations for big big storms but if this can keep you know mild rain if this can keep mild rain from pooling on the patio and just making the patio entirely wet all the time because we couldn't put any kind of outdoor carpet that we can't do anything because it just gets wet all the time i was actually to the point where i was going to buy these expensive tiles and build up a block so we can still be out here and not have to worry about getting our feet wet on the patio um so i am curious to see how this is going to hold up and the snow the snow is another one with those being plastic um 
Yeah, that might actually get interesting. I haven't thought about that with the uh, snow coming down because again, I would just pull the snow off, come down. So it's going to angle on that. I'm curious of what the holding capacity is. I may ask Adam that to actually add to the video as well as whatever retail pricing is going to be for this. If this is released yet, I don't know if it's released yet. Again, this took me a couple months to get this up and running. Um, so I am curious uh, if they have any retail pricing on this yet available or if it's even available in the stores yet. Uh, so I'll follow up in a couple days and give you guys an update and then uh, we'll get the video posted and go from there. Uh, all right, it has been probably about two weeks since I installed the Yardistry rain gutter system. Uh, you guys see this one's already got junk in front of it um we'll go over to the other side it's less cluttered um we have only actually we've gotten a couple good rainstorms since then um i did come out and look at the gutter efficiency uh during a heavy rain and i gotta say i was actually quite surprised i did not see any of the rain shooting over the sides overloading the gutters and just pissing out the side of the gutters that didn't happen i was actually very very surprised because it was a pretty violent rainstorm um that is the actually the only one i caught um a good bit of the i mean the water was coming out of the downspouts it was doing its thing um so you know thumbs up guys it worked um you know it did what it needed to do um i probably didn't even grade these properly so i did get a hold of adam and i uh, spoke with corey they're uh, one of their engineers and uh i'll give you guys some information um that i left off in the video so um you are supposed to grade those at a minimum quarter of an inch per 10 foot uh for proper loading and let me get to his question so the tested weight, so the tested weight of those brackets when we got into the information about the snow. So, the, and the fish want to eat right now. I haven't fed them yet this morning, so they're going crazy. So, all right. The strength of the brackets for the snow testing. They tested the brackets at 40 pounds per square inch. Um, so, those shouldn't be an issue uh, for holding. They are still in progress of doing snow testing. Um, so I will give you guys some feedback on snow testing once it, uh, uh, you know, once we get some snow, we're quite a few months away from that. Um, the calculations on the downspouts with the least stop and no blockage will flow 10 to 12 gallons per minute. Heavy rain at two inches per hour on 12 by 14 inch gazebo will produce roughly 2.1 gallons per minute. So, as so long as the gutters are kept clear, the downspouts will have no problem handling two inch per hour rainfall. Uh, typical installation with two downspouts will handle 20 to 24 gallons per minute. Um, blah, 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 blah. And the flexi tubing option that I was stating about uh, being able to funnel the traffic, or funnel the traffic, funnel the rain out the uh, ends instead of out the sides. They did not specifically research or recommend tubing to fit in the downspout. A flexible tube or rigid pipe with a minimum inside diameter of two inches would be adequate to fit over the downspout. So those are the answers I got back from Adam and Corey. Uh, again, very fast to respond. Uh, their support has been phenomenal. Uh, so, so far I'm gonna give this a thumbs up. Again, very well engineered, very well built, uh, good solid injection molded plastic and uh i'll give you guys a follow-up after some months of time and after i get some weight on it and we'll see how it holds up but so far i don't have any reservations about anything thank you for watching guys